Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you're all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night if you guys are out there in the world. So I recently put out a post over on X and I was mainly talking about what's happening right now within the space. And you know, I feel as though we're all kind of getting blinded by all the nonsense. And it's so easy to get caught up in that wave. It's almost like, you know, in, in the space, hopium is the drug of choice. Everyone is chasing it. And there's meme coins that will be the dealer for you. And it's just the same thing with everything else, right? Go look at the real world. You walk into a casino. You look at these betting apps, look at what's actually happening. They're feeding on quick gains. Now, I put out a post regarding this. I said casinos are absolutely crushing it. Betting apps are absolutely crushing it. Meme coins are absolutely crushing it. The retail sector is desperate for financial gains, but they are looking at it the wrong way. They want fast returns. It might not seem like it right now, but the largest returns in this space are the ones that are boring and not moving. Majority will laugh at you for holding utility projects, but realistically speaking, over time, utility-based projects will outlive any meme coin of any size. Value based on hype has a short shelf life. Value based on utility has the longest shelf life. Everyone has a different lens they are looking through in this space. Diversification is crucial. Utility isn't valuable yet, and we are probably still years away. The key thing to do is make as much money as possible in the short term and take your profits, build bags long term with profits. When the bear market finds its bottom, those long term bags are high conviction plays. In the coming years, when Amazon is settling transactions via DLT and every single bank is on digital rails, those that were criticized for focusing on utility will look like geniuses. The writing is on the wall. You could choose to read it or not. And, you know, I could not be any more clear with you guys. Listen, I'm not here to persuade anyone to invest or buy any of these altcoins. In fact, I don't care if anyone holds XRP. I don't care if you like XRP. I'm here to do research. I'm here to look at things and connect the dots and really kind of give you guys things the straight way, right? Like if we look at what's happening right now around finance, around payments, around technology as a whole, you are obviously either one, blind to the big picture or two, seeing everything that I'm seeing. We are starting to see everything moving faster, quicker, more efficient. But how do we get there? It's through new technologies, AI, blockchain, you name it. XRP and Ripple, people can look at it as a joke. People can laugh all day long. They can compare it to meme coins. I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, XRP is not my only holding. I've talked about this a hundred times on this channel. But XRP is one of those altcoins. It's one of those technologies that I personally see in the long term becoming so big to the point where everyone will either one, know Ripple's name, or two, know XRP's name. And at the end of the day, that's my confidence, right, behind XRP. It either goes to zero, and I look like an idiot, or it goes to the moon, and I look like a genius. At the end of the day, I'm, I, I don't care what these posts around X are telling us about how, oh, Ripple's dumping XRP, when all you have to do is do a little bit of research and realize that that's not even what's happening. But regardless, right, let's talk about Ripple for a second because they recently just put out this video clip on March 28th and it's Ripple's cross-border payment solution helps SCB Thailand drive innovation with instant cross-border remittances. Now, this is one of Thailand's oldest banks, but regardless of that, right, think about the fundamental efficiencies behind this. Think about what's actually going on here. When we look into this space, what are some use cases that come to mind? You might mention some of the most prominent ones that look like use cases, but realistically speaking, they're not really doing much, right? Oh, NFTs in terms of collectible art. That's great and all, but 
let's be honest, is that a game changer? Not really. Then you might say, oh, well, what about blockchain gaming? It's too early. Blockchain gaming, there's only a few select projects out there, most of them building out on Hedera that I would like to mention. But beyond that, you know, again, gaming, it's not a massive game changer. Legitimate use case potential, utilization that is going to change the way value is moved is through something like this with what Ripple is doing. Now, I will be the first one to tell you guys, XRP is not being utilized at scale. That's why we're not seeing a massive surge in XRP, even though we see all of these big moves by Ripple, which is a company, but they utilize the XRP ledger. They utilize blockchain-based technology, but they're not fully tapped in with XRP through a lot of these partnerships. What do I mean by that? Well, I don't believe, and we actually know this from a lot of these partnerships, that XRP and the XRP ledger is not being utilized at scale yet. In fact, you can utilize Ripple payments right now and not even touch XRP and still see a large portion of efficiencies because that's how bad the traditional system is. Now, when you combine Ripple payments with XRP, now you see such a big, significant downtrend in fees on transactions, but also a lot faster settlement times and the entire process is a lot more efficient. That's why it's a no brainer that XRP will be tapped in. All we have to wait for is standardization and regulations to be put in place. Now, this video clip is about two minutes and 37 seconds long. And it breaks down the entire process. One minute processing times, 80,000 monthly transactions, 400 million monthly P2P remittance settlement. Check this out. In this period, a financial institution is very. Also, I do apologize ahead of time if YouTube does mute this video. There is some music behind it. They've been muting a lot of these videos, so I do apologize. Hopefully, they don't. But again, if they do, I apologize very prone for the disruptive technology. And being the conventional bank, SCB would like to transform ourselves to become one of the digital banks that could success and survive in the future. Hello, my name is Tanawat Kitisuwan. I'm the head of Global Transactional Banking Services of SCB Thailand. In 2021, we get about 1 million transactions. And in this year, 2022, I think we're gonna reach uh, 2 million by this year end. Currently, we are serving eight countries with 13 partners. The countries that we are serving, like UK, uh, Japan, Singapore, and we are planning to grow to Australia as well. SCB has been partnering with Ripple for almost five years. Actually, during these five years that we become the partner with Ripple, one of the most advantage thing is that we could uh, grow our remittance volume. We could plug in with the new partnership uh, of Ripple globally uh, without much of the effort by having more transactional and also uh, making more of the um, revenue services together. There's a very big benefit in terms of convenience and also the cheap remittance fee. Instead of waiting for a few days for the remittance, this could be done within a minute. When we check with the traditional rail, we could save around seven times cheaper than, than the, the normal rail that we are using. Positive outcome that uh, SCB is working repo is that we could obtain the very low uh, remittance fee with the timely and high speed uh, remittance for our customers. The reason why we think that SCB and repo are the very good match partner is that we have the same vision and aligned well with our uh, strategies to become the leaders of the financial services in the, in the future world. Ripple and SCB has very good alignment in terms of vision and in terms of the capability of both sides that could grow market together. So we believe that if we are growing together, we could be achieve our, our big target. So now with that in mind, right, like with all of the information that we just heard, with how ambitious SCB is about Ripple, when we go over to the full case study, right, we could see everything regarding their goal, right, to create innovative customer experiences and be a digital banking leader in Thailand and Southeast Asia. All of these areas around the world, let it be, you know, Thailand, Africa, 
the UAE, the UK, Australia, even the US, they're all moving towards digital. It's all based around digital. They want to go fully digital. And there's innovators, there's connectors like Ripple out there that are providing this. And it's all through an efficient onboarding process, API plug and play through Ripple payments. And even when you look at some of the other connections that Ripple does have, like Volante, for an example, um, I always bring this up because, you know, these are very large names and most people just completely avoid it because they're just like, oh, well, you know, price action is not there for XRP. So I guess these are useless. No, it's it's the case of, you know, where is blockchain mass adoption happening? nowhere it's not happening it's not even a thing majority of the moves that we see around this space are through hype you know meme coins meme coins have been going crazy go back to 2021 nfts were going crazy even meme coins were also going crazy during 2021 you know hype comes in different ways but remember at the end of the day you have to separate hype from actual things that matter just like in the dot-com bubble you had billion dollar shell companies that had nothing tied to their name and they were worth billions of dollars but what rose from those ashes were blue chip household names that everyone knows about and majority of the people utilize their technology today it's the same exact way that i look at this space there is legitimate use cases here all you have to do is read all you have to do is understand what is going on here. Look at it like this, right? In 2020 alone, SCB completed over half a million transactions on RippleNet. This was a 335% volume growth year over year. And if you look at some of the statistics here, right? In terms of like the end-to-end -end processing, monthly transactions, monthly person-to-person -person remittances, like these are not just small names. I know that they're not massive because we're only seeing $400 million monthly transactional settlements but this is just through one name and there's a ton of case studies on here um, and there's a lot more names that we know of that are connected through names like Tranglo for an example but again everyone's question well where is XRP being utilized and the thing that I want you all to understand is we're not even at full adoption of standardization yet this is why I say and I go back to my initial post that we could still be years away and I know that everyone hates hearing that but listen, I'm not going to come on here and say, hey, next week, everything's going to change because it's not going to change that fast. But things are changing. Things are happening. And it's happening at a rapid pace. We can see this through major bank in, uh, involvement. We can see it with major bank moves being made. Look at SWIFT. Look at the DTCC. Look at these organizations that are now at the forefront of DLT adoption. And also when it comes to Thailand, right? September 1st, 2023. This is just recently because again, I'm talking about this video over here and this is from 2021, right? They were addressing 2022 and what they're expecting for 2022. But the reason why I bring this back up and it's not just because Ripple just recently posted it. It's the idea that Thailand is at the forefront of real-time payment transactions now. They're actually ranked first globally in real-time payments transactions per capita. And this was September 1st, 2023 and we could actually see 32 billion dollars projected real or uh sorry 32 billion projected real-time transaction volume in the thailand area in 2027 this is a pretty large growth rate but also we could see down here 6.1 billion projected real-time transaction volume in turkey in 2027 we could also see 1.4 billion projected real-time uh transaction volume in switzerland in two, 2027 like versus thailand Thailand is a massive giant here. So as we think about that, right, and as we look at what's happening here, it seems as though Ripple is at the forefront of a huge area that is projected to be an absolute giant in terms of real-time transa transactions. And we already have, you know, the oldest bank in Thailand. This is one of the longest and one of the largest banks around the Thailand region that is tapped in with Ripple. Now, also remember this from June 16th, 2023. This is the Thailand Policy Summit with TRM Labs, and this was with Ripple, and this is all regarding policy, and this is also with key stakeholders to examine the importance of regulatory clarity and fostering growth and innovation for the digital asset ecosystem in Thailand. Again, 
Thailand is at the forefront of the revolution. But what's crazy about this is when we go over here, we're met with these images. Now, focus on that middle image because I'm going to uh, zoom in on this and show you guys that in a second. But I want to show you guys a few things down here uh, from this uh, event. So first off, speakers. Ton of major speakers from SCB, from the Bank of Thailand. Like these are major giants. SCB being very successful with Ripple is a big thing to focus on. Because imagine you choosing a tech company, right? Maybe you want to streamline your business processes, all right? You're looking through all of these companies that could help you streamline your you know, business processes. And you're looking at, is there any examples of what they have done with some big names, say for so SCB? And the proof is there. They've been working with SCB for well over five years. They've been uh, streamlining their entire payment efficiencies. Like this is why I focus on some of those use cases that Ripple does have under its belt, because it's proof that their their solutions work. It's proof that their solutions are disruptive, that they are game changing. And even when we go to the agenda, right? You can see the discussions here around development of the blockchain and digital asset ecosystem in Thailand, leveraging technology to drive innovation in Thailand, a regulator's perspective. Again, Ripple is there. This is from uh, Brooks Entwistle, actually, the senior vice president and managing director at Ripple. And this is with the Bank of Thailand in terms of director of payment systems and fintech uh, department. Like when you have these names tied together in the same room, they are talking about what they can do, what they're going to be doing with some pretty large moves it really shows you that the technology here is here to stay the technology that is very disruptive and innovative and is being utilized at hand right now it might not be in a very scalable way but it is still being tapped in and utilized and it's disruptive and it's proof here that this is technology that works. These names are proof of that. These are very long standing banks, very large banks, and they are disrupting the status quo with Ripple technology. And again, this is why I say this proves that you can utilize this technology in a very disruptive way outside of the hype and nonsense. And this is what all of these big giants are going to be looking at. They're not going to care about meme coins and NFTs. They're going to be looking at the disruptive technology, the utility behind this space. But let's go back to this image, that middle image there, because this is blockchain and digital assets technology is driving pivotal changes in the financial services industry. And if we zoom in a little bit more, we can see on the bottom one, right? This is Gen 1, followed by Gen 2, and then Gen 3. So this is third generation services technology around the financial space. Initially have big banks, reputable, strong uh, presence. These are strong balance sheet, secure infrastructure players like JP Morgan, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Citi. Then you have Gen 2, which is fintechs, mobile or digital first, simple and intuitive, um, accessible, affordable. This is like Stripe, PayPal, Square, Cash App, Ven Venmo, things like that. But then we also have Gen 3, crypto startups, transparent, permissionless, decentralized, immutable. You have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Coinbase. Like this is the third generation technology around the financial services industry. Banks will morph into this technology. When I say banks are a thing of the past, I really do believe that physical banks will eventually start to fade out over time. And it is because of these new age technologies that are making everything so much more efficient. But we don't get there without standardization and regulations. This post here by Anderson was a great post and it's very simple and it's very straightforward. The quote here is ISO 20022 can move the industry towards the nirvana of cross-border real-time payments. ISO opens the floodgate to allow banks to access new domestic clearing systems around the world that we previously didn't have access to because they weren't in different file formats. Standardization and regulations 
are two keys that I look at. They're keys that unlock tremendous benefits, tremendous opportunities, and ultimately speaking, it will pave the way to the new system. I've said this a million times. We could sit here, we can get impatient, we can complain that things are taking too long, but listen, it's the same exact thing that has happened time and time and time again. Every single major revolution, every single major disruption that has ever happened, everyone was sitting there and they were impatient. They were saying this is and in denial, right? Like, oh, this can't happen. This won't happen. There's no way this is going to happen. And, you know, again, I, I, I look at this space and I'm like, how could you be in denial at this point? The writing is on the wall. The proof is there. One of the biggest things that I looked at recently was from November 8th, 2023. This is from Converge. New rails to new worlds, building inclusive, innovative infrastructure for global payments. Remember who these guests are, right? These are the head of payments at City, Ripple, and Swift. It's all infrastructure related. It's all talking about how ISO 2022 is influencing the technology roadmaps of global organizations in 2023 and beyond. And it's how these companies, how these big players are positioned at the forefront. Why is Ripple in the same room as Swift and City? Why is Ripple here talking about this? Why is Ripple the only name on this list sitting next to City, which is one of the largest banks out there, and next to Swift, which is the largest payment infrastructure network out there? all talking about shaping and implementing the next generation of cross-border payments infrastructure. Why is Ripple the only name here? Everyone wants to know, why isn't XRP going up in value? Why isn't XRP doing this? I want to ask you all this. Why is Ripple the only company sitting next to these big organizations, these big banks? Why is Ripple the only crypto-based company that is in private meetings and private rooms with the Central Bank of Central Banks, the BIS, with the IMF, the World Bank, all of these elite organizations? Why is Ripple the only name there? And what technology is Ripple using? I don't care for the nonsense in this space because there is so much of it. What I care about is looking at the facts, looking at the connections. I'm either wrong, like I said, and I just look like an absolute idiot. Maybe I drink too much Kool-Aid, but I'd rather be an idiot and try to connect these dots and invest into technology that could potentially make me extremely wealthy or miss out completely on this because I'm in denial and I think that none of these connections matter at all and I think that XRP is one big giant scam. Which, by the way, if you think XRP is a scam, well, guess what? Go look at the top 10, the top 15, the top 20 and reevaluate your standing because XRP has been in the top 10 for the last, I don't even know how many years at this point and it has been one of the largest projects in the space and it is one of the only projects in the space that has proper utility and has extremely disruptive technology tied to it since day one if xrp is a scam i think that majority of this space is a scam most people are sitting here and they're not doing proper research they're not reading into things as much as they should be they look at X, they look at YouTube, and they watch one thing, they listen to one thing, and that's it. Their mind is made up. Even myself, listen guys, I'm not some, you know, I, I'm not this guy that comes on here and records these videos, and you should believe every, sing every, every single thing that I say. You should 100% be doing your own research as well. Because at the end of the day, you can't trust everything that is being said you can't trust every single thing that is being read you need to 100 percent do your own research but i try to deliver you guys the facts i try to connect the dots here and at the end of the day i can't come to a conclusion that isn't the fact that ripple in my mind is already tied to this new system they are already behind this new system and xrp is a crucial piece of the puzzle as well because again ripple has been talking about xrp they've been utilizing the xrp ledger and xrp for a very very long time so with that being said 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and Jennifer Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.